Okay, and so for this session, what we're going to do is cover the multi-fabric EVPN VXLAN updates that we have with 10.12. To the, the typical agenda that we have, I might skip through some of this. Um, a lot of this is reviewed from prior TOIs, so uh, where I find um, ways to, to skip through this, I, I will, because we do have a demo at the, at the end of the presentation. Okay, so before 10.12, so IPv4 underlays with v4 and v6 unicast overlays were supported in the campus but not the data center and so only ipv4 unicast overlays were validated by the ntl prior to 10.12 and also from a gbp relay perspective it, the border v vtep for the 8360 was the only platform that supported gbp relay and also for gbp policy enforcement support you can see the platforms prior to 10.12 that were supported and so what's new with 10.12, so now we support IPv4 underlay with both v4 and v6 unicast overlays in scaled DCNM uh, deployments. And you can see the platforms there that we support as the border VTEPs as well as the border leader VTEPs. Also new with 10.12 is the 6400 is now supported as a campus border leader VTEP. And on the GPP side for the campus, we see that now we have a 6200M does support static VXLAN tunnels with GBP for policy enforcement and also GBP relay. So platforms, uh, the 8325 and the 10K are now supported uh, with GBP relay. And uh, I think I cover this in, in future content, but some all that really means is that you can't use the 8325 and 10K for policy enforcement. But from the border VTEP perspective, it needs to be able to copy the GBP packets across to the different fabrics. And so that that is what is supported with the 8325 and 10K with 1012. Okay, so use cases. So again, just showing a um, typical topology here. It's multi-fabric, right? Um, we've got DC Fabric 1 and DC Fabric 2 here with the the different border border VTEPs that are supported. We we do recommend VSX for, for any border VTEP deployments. And so again, what, what we did with 10.12 is the NTL validated both V4 and V6 across this environment. So and just typical what we've seen before, so fully meshed uh, intrafabric VXLAN tunnels and fully meshed uh, interfabric VXLAN tunnels between the border VTEPs across all the fabrics. And let's see, so again, just reiterating the, the supported platforms and the border lead, border leader VTEPs. And just as a reminder, those are used when you have multiple fabrics per site so that you don't have to have your access VTEPs in a full mesh. You just need the, the border VTEPs to be in the full mesh. And supported between fabrics now. So we now also support IPv4 multicast routing in the VXLAN overlay. That's new to 10.12. We don't support it from a subnet stretch perspective, and this is just due to a specific customer requirement that we had. And you can see now also we've added IPv6 unicast traffic in the VXLAN overlay. And again, that's new to 10.12. And also the distributed L3 gateways for the data center, which is new to 10.12. And then over on the campus side, so again, you, you know, so now we have the 6400 that's supported as a border VTEP, um, which can relay GBP as well if you have, if you're using GBP or V and VT in the environment. So again, supported uh, 8325 and 10K, again, just relay only, no enforcement, and the 6400, uh, as I just mentioned, and then also the 6200 is new as well, which can support GBP. And just like we mentioned on the, the data center side, you know, this is this is also new, the multicast routing, the VLX, VXLAN overlay, and then everything else we had kind of already supported prior to that. So details and caveats. So this is some of the scale testing that the NCL has validated both in the 10, 11, 1000 release and also the 10.12. And this kind of more is specifically related to the border leader VTEPs and the, uh, the scale for the environment. And so yeah, multi-fabric, I mean, it's really all about scale in itself, right? I mean, we recommend single fabric for most customer deployments. At the point where the VTEPs start scaling out large enough, you need to be able to split the, the fabric apart. And so you can see where, what, what we have listed here for the VTEP scale that the NTL had, had tested. So this isn't based on any actual customer deployments that we know of that support or that have been implemented multi-fabric. This is just our, our best uh, 
best testing as far as scaling out the number of, of uh, VTEPs in the fabric against the, the number of sites. And you can see the ARP and MAC scale that's listed here. Pretty similar between the 8325 and the 9300. The 10K is not listed here, but as we all know, it's it's basically an 8325. So you'd expect to see similar scale numbers here as well. And so I won't cover all this, but I wanted to include it in the slide deck for everybody. And see so VLANs local to the fabric, 512 stretch VLANs across all the fabrics, 386, and then 16 for the number of VRFs shared across all the fabrics. And this slide is just kind of showing you the different, there's like three different deployment models that you can have. In this case, I'm showing the Canvas and the DC uh, underlay, just as an example, and then the simplified overlay pictures at the bottom here, where we have dedicated border VTEPs between all of the fabrics. And this is used in networks when the axis and border VTEPs are not directly connected. And that's typically the case with your just, you know, your leaf and spine architecture. And so it's applicable to one fabric per site and multiple fabrics per site. Uh, roles are currently currently not uh, applicable to data center deployments currently, which means, you know, it's, GBP isn't really relevant in the, in the data center, at least not currently anyway. And so this is a just another deployment scenario where we've got the ag and border VTEPs um, in the campus only. And this is used when the access border VTEPs are directly connected to each other. So kind of a collapsed design where we've got, you know, the ag and border VTEPs are all um, or the sorry, the access VTEPs are all connected to the to the border leaders. In the same one fabric per site or multiple fabrics per site. And then this kind of last deployment example with shared border VTEPs with L3 between the fabrics. And so it's used with access and shared border when they're not directly connected and L2 is not required between the fabrics within the campus and applicable to multiple fabrics per site. And so just to review as well, because this presentation kind of includes the GPP stuff as well as the IPv6 support. So this is just a reminder for everybody what GPP basically is. It's a group based policy and it's supported. Add, we added support in 10.8 and then as you see, we've extended it to other platforms. It'll allow support for a, a policy ID to be included in the VX LAN header for policy enforcement purposes. And so I've got the platforms here for the Ingress VTEP policy support and again 6200 m's new with a 10.12 and then gbp relay for 83 and 25 and the 10k with 10.12 so as far as the configuration is concerned this is all kind of review from prior releases so if you're enabling gpp in, in the campus it's it's really simple you just need to enable gbp on the border vteps it, some of the, some of them like the 8360 do support policy enforcement as well as relay so but if so for the 8325 and 10k for example you just need to enable gbp to get the group based policy ids transported across the fabric and another important configuration and again this is all a review from uh, prior releases uh, t for the toi so for l2 connectivity you do need to enable this dynamic vxlan bridging mode Otherwise, the L2 traffic won't transit the, the fabric from, from either side. And for V6 configurations on the border, there really isn't anything additional required. Uh, on the access VTEP, you want to configure the IPv6 address family along with any of the IPv6 Act gateways, and that's pretty much it. So best practices, again, I'm not really going to cover a lot of this because it's it's really well covered in prior TOIs. Um, so just kind of covering what's what's relevant to the border VTEPs in this uh, environment. So and I've, I've included the, the references and then at the end of the presentation, I've kind of collated all of the different um, TOIs that we've had for all of these releases. We recommend, as I've already mentioned, logical VSX for all the border VTEPs so wherever possible. Uh, and as we mentioned, GBP needs to be enabled on each of the border VTEPs to copy the, the, the uh, oh, it should be GBP ID between the fabrics. And just uh, just as a recommendation too, it kind of helps with troubleshooting for V4 
v6 it's kind of nice if you just use the same addressing here so you can see an example where we got the ipv4 address and then the, the corresponding v6 address are very similar so it's easy to to tell you know where you're looking at these packets where they're coming from Okay, and I'm going to skip through this portion of it because this is all review at this point, um, but it's uh, just kind of uh, references for how to troubleshoot, you know, GBP in the environment uh, with multi-fabric. Uh, and most of this stuff is is pretty obvious, um, but I'll, I'll let you just kind of read through this. But basically for GBP, the, you'd want to mirror the, the packets to make sure that they're going where, where they're supposed to be going. And so example here, just for review, um, you can see the group policy ID there, both um, going outbound and then coming back. And just uh, when you're troubleshooting the multi-fabric VGP VPN, you just wanna, it's pretty obvious, you wanna check first that the single fabric is working okay. And the resources that we've included in the prior TOIs to help. And then the same thing here for troubleshooting uh, multi-fabric BGP eVPN with V6 overlays. And uh, this this portion is just, you wanna check that the Mac, um, the neighbor discovery and the routes all reflect the correct next top as you can kind of see in the examples here. And we can just take a quick look at the demo to, to cover this stuff. Um, but you just wanna make sure, because again, the, the access VTEPs, they only connect to the border. They don't connect to across the fabric. So you just wanna make sure that all the Mac tables are pointing to the correct uh, border VTEP. And the same example, just basically checking the V6 neighbor entries and then the IPv6 route entries as well. Okay, and so quickly onto the demo. So we, this is an environment that we have here in Roseville. Um, it's a, it, they're pretty much standalone devices, 6300s on either, each side um, with 8360s in the, in the middle, but it's a multi-fabric design. As you see there, 65,001, 65,002. We've got two VLANs there, 100 and 101. And just a, a few uh, devices that are connected. These are all ICSIA ports, just sending traffic, both V6 and V4 routed across the fabric. And so we can see the active gateway configurations here for both V4 and V6. So this is a dual stack basically configuration. And so what we're gonna do is just kind of briefly look at the BGP configurations for each, and then I'll show the, the fabric uh, or the traffic flowing across the fabric. And then I'll remove the bridging mode from one and we'll see how that breaks the, uh, the environment. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing this. Okay, and uh, so let's just get this cleaned up a little bit. So I've got each of the 6300s are connected to their corresponding border VTEP on, on each side. And we'll just do, take a look at the BGP configuration. And so you can see on the 6300, we have um, you know, your typical configuration only pointing to the, to the border again, uh, not connecting across the fabric anywhere. And important to note here is this eBGP is between the border VTEPs. So this is a required for the you know, traffic to, to traverse the, the fabric. And just to show what that looks like currently. So we've got um, both V4 and V6, both switched and routed traffic going across the fabric currently. And so we'll just take a look at some of the configurations here. And so on the access VTEPs, you can see the, the two VLANs there for eVPN. And this is where we have the, the tunnel bridging mode here for IBGP and eBGP. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do since we only have five minutes, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this on one of the border routers and you'll see how that impacts the traffic. And of course, the screen is probably a little bit hard to see. Yeah, you can see we've already started dropping packets here. We didn't have any any drop packets before, and we're, we're incrementing the lost packets now.
Oh, and that's uh, one other thing I just wanted to show too. So show. Uh, And this is where you can this command is helpful to be able to see where the the um, the max and IPs and which next tops that they're hitting and whether or not it's a it's an internal route or a, an external route. That's a, a good command to run as well. So yeah, I'm just going to skip back. So again, we've evolved the multi fabric support, you know, over several releases. So I've just included all the prior releases. Um, all the videos that we've released, the slides, um, just 10.9 is a really good section to go to for just really detailed troubleshooting on on multi-fabric uh, EVPN and then just the updates for 10.10 and 10.11 and um, so so that's that's pretty much it for the presentation just thank you for your time